In the last section, we took a look at some of the new features in C Sharp 6. In this section, we will be building a mortgage calculator in WPF. But in addition, we'll be covering some other topics. So the section itself will break down such as building the calculator UI, then writing the calculator logic, then doing some refactoring, and then hitting some topics such as the delegates, generics, lambdas and link, and database types such as SQL versus non-SQL databases. So let's go ahead and get started with building the calculator UI, which is going to be using Windows Presentation Foundations. So in this specific video, we'll be focusing on creating the mortgage calculator UI. Okay, to get started, before I start drawing any elements for the UI, I want to set up my realty and make sure I have space to work. So why don't I shorten the Solution Explorer pane and then get rid of the output by unpinning it. Okay, now we can continue by adding some labels to start marking some of the areas of our mortgage calculator. On the left-hand side, I'll grab a label and drag it onto the screen and we'll call this mortgage calculator. And sometimes instead of like redragging the same element, I like to just copy and paste. So I actually highlighted the mortgage calculator and then just did control C and V and then it actually duplicates it. And if you look at the grid at the in the XAML window, you'll see that there was a duplicate here. Now afterwards, we can come in and clean this up and correctly name them, appropriately name them. But for now, let's just go ahead and uh, get the labels completed. So I'll call this label here monthly cost. What our mortgage calculator is going to do is basically give us the monthly payments when you input a mortgage amount, an interest rate, and period. So those are the items that we're going to put on the screen. I'm going to copy and paste this three more times. And actually one more. And we'll call this the mortgage amount. That's pretty cool that it has a spell check right there. What will we do without spell check? We'll call this interest. And when I click on here, the way that I get the focus is either by clicking on it softly two times or by simply hitting F2. And then that should focus, put focus on the text. This will be the period. And down here, this will be the monthly payments. Okay, now let's go ahead and add in the text boxes where we'll put in our values. So I'll drag in one text box here under mortgage amount. And then once again, I will copy it and paste it one, two, three times. We're going to have a text box for the interest, a text box for the period, and then a text box for the monthly payments. And then we can go ahead and add in a button that will do the calculation. So I'll drag a button here. I'll hit F2 to get focus and we'll call this calculate. Now what I'd like to do is I don't want to see the values that's defaulted as text box in here. So I will just get focus on this text box and just hit the delete key to remove that. Um, alternatively, you can come to the XAML and clear it there. For example, if I come to mortgage amount,
I can go under text here and just hit delete. So the actual field is called text box copy one. So I could just delete that and actually remove the one from the period, but do that for text box copy two. That removes it from the interest. And then we could do it for text box, our original one. And that removes it under mortgage amount. All right, to make this look a little bit easier on the eye, why don't we go ahead and add in a border and then put that around the title, mortgage calculator. And for the label of mortgage calculator, what we can do is increase the font. So what I did is I selected, I put my focus on the label in the XAML, and then that automatically put focus on mortgage calculator. And so now I'm able to come to the properties, and if I choose text, I have my option to increase the font and we could expand the Solution Explorer a little bit to hit the drop-down arrow, and let's say we bring it up to 24. That looks pretty decent. Let me just position that a little bit. And there we go. So we have our mortgage calculator. We're going to be calculating the mortgage, the monthly cost. We have our mortgage amount, our interest rate, our period. We can align these a little bit to make them look a little bit better. And then we are going to be hitting the calculate button in order to get monthly payments. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and see how it looks when we run. Let's build, make sure that there's no odd errors. Looks good. And let's click on start. And there we go. Now this little uh, section here with these icons shows up as a result of us running in debug mode. If I were to actually stop the debug mode and go to debug and start without debugging, then we'll get our window the way that we expect it to look. All right. So that is it for setting up the UI and what we can do before adding the logic is set up our XAML to make more sense. That is to change the variable name to what they are. So for example, for mortgage amount, if I click on here, I'll get the focus on the XAML. We should really be changing this to something that makes sense like amount and likewise for interest. If I click on interest, puts focus on that text box, then I can come here and call this interest. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. You can go ahead and uh, do the same um, in the interest of time. And now we have it. So I went ahead and updated my labels and text box names. The convention that I used for the labels was just doing LBL underscore and then the appropriate name. And for the text box, I could have done TXT also, but I decided to just keep it straight by just naming the variable. Amount, monthly payments, period, interest rates, and then also a title for the button. So that should be it. Um, we can run it again by hitting debug. Make sure that it starts without any issues.
and it does and that is it for the UI. In this video we set up the mortgage calculator UI. 